Hello guys, welcome back to the couch. You know what it is, your local Tuesday dose of football. Um, this week in particular is a great week for football because we have double game weeks. For fantasy players, you know how much we love double game weeks. For people with squads with a little bit of no depth, not good for us. Speaking of no depth, how are you, Siri? <laughs> I waited for it, wallah. I, I, I let you rope me in. Rope me in, rope me in. <laughs> That's a good one. And then James Milner came on. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm very, very good, my brother. Um, I stuffed up the intro. So from now on, Tanaka's going to be doing intros because he's so good at him. I'm the, I called him a guest. Do you believe that shit? The man with the most caps. He is literally the most caps. Like, he's been to my house. He's done more episodes at my house than I have. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm here. We're here. We're live. Um, thanks, Tanaka, for that. Um, yeah, I'm a bit sad, bro. I really am. That's all right. And look, someone is not as sad as you are. We've got the man who runs this show and is the driver of the hot seat. We've got Mehmet, someone who's very happy. Mems, how are you, Mems? Payback is a... The Eddie had was bouncing. I was bouncing. Just a, just a great weekend overall, man. Yeah, guys, make sure, make sure you check out the match reaction to see how these two handled that game yes, as well. Yes, correct. Uh, we do have a watch-along live, so if you do, don't pause this, finish this, and then go watch the watch-along. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe, please. And don't forget, click we, that subscribe button. We absolutely button. appreciate everything. So, let's get into the Let's get cooking, boys. straight <laughs> into I want to cook. I've been excited for this, and I've <laughs> went back and watched that City game probably about twice. <laughs> Can um, you do this without me? Can I go? Is yeah, you can leave, man. All good. <laughs> no, I'm just... <laughs> I'm here to face the... This, fa welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the honorary and introductory roast of Trent Alexander-Arnold. Trent Alexander-Arnold, how are you still in that Liverpool team is beyond me, okay? If there was another right back you, and you were in any other club and you weren't a, a, boy, you, you weren't a boyhood, you know, protege coming through the academy, you would have been shipped to Everton a long time ago. No, relax. Not Everton. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> but you would have been shipped <laughs> along. Man said Everton. <laughs> hey. But four catastrophic errors leading to goal. Basically a ghost on the pitch attackingly. So don't even come for me and say Trent is an attacking player. He's an attacking asset. That's why he doesn't defend. The man didn't even attack. Okay. He whipped in three crosses that were garbage that no one could get on the end of. Yeah, you could say Nunes should have been playing to get on the end of him and help out in attack, but that's not an excuse. No excuses at all. Okay. The first goal, and look, I really want to show you guys the video. So I'm going to pop it up there for anyone that's watching at home, just a quick one. But the first one, is it in your memory? No? Well, listen, everything you're about to say, yeah. I've been saying all season. Yeah. Like I've been, I, I see the problem. And I defend Trent because we know he's not rubbish, you know what I mean? But he's this year... I don't know, we are learning something new about him. For how, for how many years has it been good? Five years, six years? He's been like unbelievable. All right, you get ripped once or twice. It's a normal thing. But I always tell you people overdo it on Arnold. Yeah. And I swear they've manifested this onto him. They really, really have. It's become like a real thing, bro. Where he's actually shit, bro. <laughs> he thinks Pogba bro. and his brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mane. Sadio Mane. No, Mane. No, Mane. No, Mane's not that kind. Mane's fasting right now, bro. <laughs> don't, don't, don't take his sin. Bro, and especially the goal where he let the last one, the Jack Grealish goal. Jack Grealish just ran past him and Trent just was ball watching. Bro, he, the man is a serial ball watcher. And everyone tells me, it's not Trent, it's Van Dijk. It's, I said, listen, for, like, if, for the amount of time you watch Liverpool, Trent is basically our cam, right? So he overloads the right side. He pushes up very, very high. There was a point in that game right before that goal. Mm -hmm. Watch the watch along right before that goal. And Zach was like to me, it's not Trent, it's not Trent. I said, it is Trent. Because if Trent's not fatigued from chasing the goal, bro, he was, he went to the right wing, then he went to the striker, uh, to the goalkeeper, then he went to the left wing, then he went back to the thing, and then Bobby didn't press with him, so he's like, he just gave up. So, all that's fatigue, bro. And you're getting back, you're already getting cooked. The whole game has been getting cooked. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, City, uh, City played out of their skin. Like, I don't think you've seen a better City performance this year, maybe once or twice. But that was a that was City at their absolute best. Now for Trent. I say this all the time, bro. Like, it's 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 not even just Trent. It's Jurgen Klopp now. Right? You know, I love Klopp. He's on my wall two times. I, I never want him sacked. But there's, this is why I differentiate Pep. Money, bullshit, I get all that, bro. But when it comes to tactical in-game, and it can eat you sometimes. It can bite you in the, in the ass, bro. Same, you say it in the Champions League final. But when you say, tre what, why are we still playing with high line and our wing, our, uh, 
our left mm. backs and right backs, our wing backs are all the way up. Like Robertson, because Robertson had a worse game than Trent. You, I guarantee you watch the game again. Robertson was absolutely shocking. Like Mahrez, I know Mahrez is a baller, but he you don't let him. him. Yeah, he cooked him, but Mahrez mm. never cooks against us like that, bro. Mm. You've seen that. We've seen that a long, long time ago. I don't know if it's because he played for Scotland. I don't know what it is. No excuses, guys. Like this week. No, he had a, he had a, yeah. he had a big game, big win against Spain. There's no excuses, bro. Klopp has to like, we are not that team anymore. Like it's, I know it's sad to say, bro. Like it's the truth, but sometimes you have to eat shit and take the truth in. We're not that team anymore. Fabinho can't press. I sent you that clip in the group, and I'm like, look at my, look at my number six. Look at this guy who was one of the best a couple years ago. Look at how bad like Henderson was nowhere. Elliot, like, bro, nobody was like that performance was just disgusting, bro. Salah. Sorry. Salah's like I'm mm, Salah's mm. gonna give up soon. Salah Salah's and Gakpo were the two saving grace. Literally. Yeah. Sorry, take that. No, you're saying. right. I was just gonna say, can I throw another hypothetical at you? Mm -hmm. That uh, maybe your defenders don't know how to play on the edge of the box. That's the hundred percent. Like if you're if Van Dyke has to say there's so sustained pressure, like Van Dyke's looked gun, and Van Dyke looked gun for all these years, but he didn't have people but running he, at him const constantly. No, no, he was he was good, bro. But that I'm telling you, when I watch him, I feel like he's just a big pussy. I, no, I'm not, no, no lie, bro. I don't but know. That's the, what I'm asking. Like the injury, people say that it's a very like career-ending injuries, whatnot, whatnot. Like, all right, bro. If you're not gonna play like that, then the manager has to be like, all right, I need to go back three. I need to put someone next to you. Oh, I, or you don't play at all. Like it's very like I know he's price tag bullshit. In the end of that, I didn't care about none of that rubbish, bro. I didn't care for players with this much has to start. If he's not good for the team at the moment, you don't play him. And bro, like I don't know. When I see him run, bro, his knee is just. I feel like he's he's just worried, too scared. He still thinks that he has two, three people behind him. Mm. That if anything happens, but let, let, like people, uh, Van Dyke's prime was unbelievable, bro. Mm. Let, like, let's not talk shit now because he's having a bad season. That one season, but that no, no two, one passed that him. two seasons he had was like, bro, the best, the best ever. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you should congratulate him, whatever, but. I'm just saying about potential now. I'm listening. No, no, I'm just saying about potential. No, you're being, you're doing these <laughs> ones in the corner. <laughs> I'm just saying about potential. Like, it doesn't matter what it is, bro. You should get back to what you're doing. I don't know if you're scared about the injury, but yeah, that performance was disgusting. But yeah, but once that midfield gets f sorted, hopefully, look, I don't even know what the hell they're going to do. But Klopp's come out and said, we're going to spend. And I never hear him say that. I've never heard him say we're going to spend. He's always like, we cannot spend like other, you know, he's always saying that. Now he's like, Taking another route, so I don't know, bro. Let's see what happens. Mm. And not everyone should be promised a position. Arnold, Van Dijk, Fabinho, Henderson. I don't care what you've won, what you've done. You bring the, you have to bring the better players in. You got to get results, bro. Mm. I was telling you, I don't care about. It's not about beating City right now. I don't care mm. who it is, bro. It could be freaking Sheffield United in that championship. I just want three points. I just want to false believe again because I know we're not gonna make the four. But at least four, get that a four, that four dreams gone now that like Newcastle. It's beat. still not gone, but I'm mm. telling you of how they're playing. Mm. If we get top four, mm. Mane done some black magic for us to get there. If we get top four, <sighs> that was my Liverpool rant. Um, much yeah. needed. Much needed. But Trent didn't get the cooking that I was. Go on. That I was. The, nobody's mm. getting. I'm defending yeah, nobody. Yeah. Trent. No, you can't defend this man. Like, I'm happy we won. I'm happy City got the three points. We played amazing. But I still feel like we didn't deserve that win because that wasn't the Liverpool that I, I wanted to turn up. I was hoping for a good game. I was hoping for Ente and stuff. The games that we usually see when Liverpool play. Heck, the game that I w the, the game that I went and watched when we played Anfield away. You played better. Uh, uh, yeah. That was a better game. Of course. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's just coming down to players like Trent not pulling their <coughs> weight. And again, people will say, "Oh, but he's an attacking fullback," but he's not. Not anymore. And People like Salah and Gakpo deserve a lot more than the performance that Trent Alexander-Arnold put in. Klopp deserves more than what Trent put in. Um, Robertson, I know you say he played bad, but I think he played okay defensively. Shocking. I think he, not as bad as Trent did. Shocking, like, bro. Wallah. But Robbo doesn't give up. Robbo doesn't let his men run past him and watch him. That's why you never hear anyone talk about Robertson. Yeah. Ever. He he put he yeah he might make a mistake and trip up over. I'd rather a player trip up over his own feet trying to make a tackle. And we can set a goal like what Akanji did. You know, Akanji made a f he made a mistake. He got back. He grabbed the Gakpo, tried to pull him off. The, or was it Gakpo Jota. or Jota? He tried to pull him off I the ball. Not, that's not even a mistake. That's yeah, like I'd rather that. Yeah, I'd rather that than Akanji leave Gakpo, uh, leave Jota, and Jota goes and get, just gets an easy walk through goal. 
So when Trent does things like that, like, bro, it's infuriating as a fan, not even a Liverpool fan, just as a football fan. Like, brother, how are you getting paid so much a week and you're putting in performances like that week in, week out? Is he just having a bad season or is he actually just rubbish? No, I think it's... I, I, I don't think he's rubbish. I don't, I don't know any of you here. Defensively, you can say he's not the best, mm. but he, he's not rubbish, bro. And ma- he may be... He might become rubbish. He mm. might go into Deli Ali's... Yeah, well, life, we've, see, we've seen this before. we never know. It yeah, happens. We've but seen this. To say he's rubbish, uh, you can criticise his defending. The attacking, all right, I get it. But it's just what he's asked to do. It's not right, bro. Mm. Like, you're a right back, first of all. First and foremost, you're a right back. So if your defense is not that good, I understand. But contribute to something else then in attack. What you usually do, and he's not doing that. Man, we had Stones at right back, so I yeah, you had him as uh, Cam. Yeah, did you say? <laughs> did you say for the third goal, Stones was linking up in the middle? But that's what I mean. We yeah. allow that, like we allow that to happen. Yeah, Newcastle wouldn't let you do that. No, no way, Newcastle. Mm. I'm talking about Newcastle. We there. struggled hard. Same yeah. circumstances. Brentford same won't let you do that. Yeah. Do you know why? Because they're hard working, mm. and everyone that Liverpool team is just I don't know. I think that's it. They've won everything. They've whatever they've. They've done everything they need, they could do. Now I'm I'm actually like I know I should be angry and shit, which I am, but I'm trying to look at it in a positive way, where it's good now. Now everyone is like, remember that season we had last season? You don't want to go back there fighting seventh place, sixth place, mm. whatever it is, you know, like a wake up call. And I hope Cop gets some money, bro. I hope they back him. I hope he spends what he's got to spend. And yeah, don't I don't rule us out next year, bro. Straight mm. out. Maybe Champions League if we don't make it. I mean, no, no Champions League is better for you guys, but. In saying that, you don't want to be playing Europa League. I don't either. want to play conference. I don't want to play Europa. I'd rather yeah. finish eighth. Yeah. Wallah, like honestly, then finish fifth or sixth mm. or seventh, whatever the hell it is. I would not want to play. It's just for the team as well. But yeah, so City, big three points for the title race. Arsenal also got a big three points, which pissed me off, honestly. I really it just pisses me off. How do they keep getting results week in, week out? They had a lot of injuries too. They started what? <laughs> had, oh, yeah, and your man's off fraud watch. Wow, there's a new there's a new man on Ford Watch. Don't you worry. <laughs> new man on Ford Watch. Well done, Gabby. Well done. Ah, uh, this is uh, I know where this is going. He does, he does watch it. The end. He, do, the end. He, he does watch our podcast, doesn't he? Yeah. I <laughs> uh, see. I did this for motivation. <laughs> People say I'm ahead. I'm I'm getting him. Gee, did you yeah. see how good he played? He's I don't got watch two it. goals and assist, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah he yeah. played good, bro. Uh, he always does, bro. He just doesn't score. That's that's the, and that's his biggest problem. Um, I wasn't here last week, by the way, to join TK in the admission, but I'm just finally gonna admit it that Arsenal might win the league. Did I admit that? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. did. And yeah, you said last week. I, I don't. I don't believe. Oh, uh, you didn't say Arsenal. Those words didn't come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Th- those words didn't come out of you. You didn't say <laughs> Arsenal. My iPhone 13 says different. No, no. No, no. He didn't say Arsenal. I'll I give him that. It. He didn't say I Arsenal. I said that team. Yeah, he said that team. Yeah, I, I, just, I, just, I just, I just, I just went. <laughs> <laughs> and you said City won't win it, so yeah. Look, you never um, know. Fulham might win it, man. It, it, look, it really it, it all comes down to the game, and I hate to say it, but it's Liverpool against Arsenal at Anfield. It's not even that, bro. Wallah. That's the game. Even that, if we beat them, what's what's the difference? If you beat them, they're two points ahead, and when they're two points ahead, I think they're more likely to cave. I don't think we're going to drop points for the rest of the season. I don't think you yeah. should too. Like, honestly... So you're beating Arsenal is what you're saying? Honestly, looking at, the, at them, how they are now, how we're playing, we're getting better and better with each going match. Like, every game that goes past, we're looking more like the team that we used to be. And I'm not just saying that based off this game. I'm basing it off the Leipzig game. I'm basing it off the last few performances, the Newcastle game. You know, we've, show, we've been showing more heart than what we have before. Um, so I do think that we will not drop points for the remainder of the season. I don't know. Uh, maybe I don't think you will, but we don't it's have so any, hard. Yeah, we don't have any United left to play. We don't have... Cause the, that, but that's uh, the problem. Because the Premier League is just yeah, I, is I, a stinger. I, I get it, but I get it, yeah. But also, what I said a few weeks ago that a lot of people, and especially your mate, didn't really take a liking to. Let him cook. When I said Haaland, we play better with Alvarez in the team instead of Haaland. Did you see how Alvarez played? Did you see how we played with a player that drops in and is creative in the <laughs> midfield, complimenting De Bruyne and Mares and Gundogan? Now, do you understand what I'm talking I, about? You I, understand. I know this. I really You understand. understand. But I want everyone at home to understand that. That is what I'm talking about. That football that we played on the weekend with a false nine like Alvarez is what I need. I Fluidity. Don't, I don't want Haaland. And I'm going to come out and say it now. If we can sell Haaland to Real Madrid for 300 million, take him. Okay? <laughs> Break your records. Win the Champions League that you want to win. Just get out of my team. And I love you. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. I don't hate you as a player. I think you're 
I think you're I think you're brilliant. I really think you're probably one of the best goal scorers we'll ever see. But not for my team. I'm sorry. <laughs> not for Manchester City. Okay. I'd rather play with Julian Alvarez than play with Erling Haaland. Okay, one sec. Yeah. When Alvarez gets injured and Haaland's not in the team, what happens? Um anyone One lot I reckon a- Foden can be yeah, good a- here too. <laughs> anyone c- b- w- before we had Alvarez, we had De Bruyne playing that false nine. We had Bernardo playing the false nine. We had Foden playing false yeah. nine. Like anyone can play that role in our team. Because we have creative midfielders. What, what do you, you are you going to say something? No, I've got nothing, bro. I think yeah. I think what you're saying is 100% right. I think people don't understand football. People don't understand that it's a team sport. That you need to... Everyone needs to be involved. In, not, in, in sport matches, it's probably... You can get away with it. Yeah. And like... But the football that City play, they've always... Pep Guardiola, he used to turn strikers to wingers. Mm. I, I used, and I said this before, like... I know... Maybe Haaland people underestimated what he could do. But people don't really realise, like, bro, with with a false nine city, everyone gets involved. Mm-hmm. It's not just De Bruyne, Haaland, and Inshallah. Yeah. It's literally like there's an aim. There's a movement. There's like, all right, Grealish can play better now. Uh, Mares is playing better now. You know what I mean? Like, And uh, people telling me Haaland would have scored the hat-trick in that Liverpool game. He probably did. Probably would have. But forget the Liverpool game because that we played worse than a relegated side. We really did. We didn't play that good. Mm. So, like, when it comes to a team that's low block, what do you do? Mm. And there's three defenders on. Like when City came to Anfield, mm. we literally held Gomez. I don't even rate Joe Gomez. And then like cooked Haaland. Didn't let him move. Yeah. So with Alvarez, there's movement, you know. There's coming in. There's Gundogan goes up. There's switching. There's, there's switching. There's yeah. things happening. Like well, you, you seen it before, even with Cancelo. He used to like be on the other side. Mm. Just that movement with them players. I think that's what Pep... It's the fluidity. It's and I just want to say, I know City spend money a lot, but that was 20 million, bro. That was a deal of like... Not even. Not 18 and a half 30, with the add-ons yeah, but yes, now 20. with add-ons like 20 M's yeah. but whatever who cares 10, 20, 50 bro it's a bargain that's a player that's worth 100 now in this day and age honestly. unbelievable bro and yeah you're right man like I was saying this to Arnie when we were watching the game I said man the reason why I prefer Haaland I uh, prefer no Haaland over with Haaland is because with Haaland we'll create six chances and he hope that he scores maybe three or four of them which most of the time he does but sometimes he doesn't Without Haaland, we create 20 chances and hope... 10 of them go in. <laughs> yeah, or 10 of them get close or like three or four of them go in. Four goals went in against Liverpool. All four of them the same. All four of them the same. Yep. Bang, bang, bang through the middle, out wide, into the middle, into the goal. Barcelona. Well, from the six-yard line. All four goals were from the six-yard line. Pep's Barcelona. That's why it's yeah. one of the best, bro. The tiki-taka You know that. You, when, as a United fan, you hate that game, whatever. But ah, yeah. everyone knows that's like... Because when you can't get the ball off someone, mm. what do you do? Like, you can't win the ball back because everyone's passing, everyone's moving. This guy, like, if you're a defender and you're looking at Alvarez and you're like, oh, I got this guy. Then, like, you blink, then it's Gundogan mm. and the Bruyne and then Alvarez. You're like, bro, what the hell's going on? Yeah. This Pep is here. That is our signature. And that's what I miss, man. That's why I'm actually kind of frustrated that Haaland's in the team now. I kind of, I'm going to sound crazy, but I kind of blame him for where we are at the moment that we're not walking away with the league. Nah, you can't say that. Look, no, no, I can say that because no, but even but City's <laughs> City, <laughs> you can say whatever it wants to oh, say. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just I want some backup from TK because he's looking at me like I'm just the dumbest person in the world. <laughs> but TK has given everyone looks like I hate yeah. all your teams. <laughs> 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 you shit, <laughs> you pieces of doo doo. Yeah, but uh, you know what? It's a blame the rest of the team too because a lot of them didn't play good, bro. Well, exactly, like, a, lo- a lot of them didn't play good, but. Just looking at, just watching that game without him and how we played, it just reminded me of the season we had Sane and we had Aguero and David Silva. Like, it was just memories to me. And I'm like, man. I think it's just easy to scapegoat Haaland in that respect. I've watched so many City games and I see Haaland's movements and I've literally just beak and laughed him. And the amount of time that guy checks in, checks out and makes a run and he's not found is ridiculous. Yeah. And that's where I go, all right, we can say let's blame Haaland, but. What well, what are Haaland's actual attributes as a striker? The guy's tall, yeah. he's physical, and pretty much I reckon can swear up to any defender in the league mm-hmm. and win that physical battle. And he's quick. I agree, you but know? we, we can't find him. But that's again, mm. that's on the players that are playing. Like these players are supposed to be so the best midfielders to ever play in the league, and they can't lob a ball over to Haaland when he makes a run. But mm-hmm. that's not the that's that's what I say. That's, that's not, not their game. Style. That's, <laughs> not, our that's not their game, bro. Yeah, yeah. but you like Bruno Fernandez is good at that. Bruno yeah. Fernandez like can go deep and whack a ball. Yeah, the Bruno can but, too, but, but, he, he's, but, but when he's the Bruno can, but when the Bruno's trying to do everything, yeah, 
It's hard. But it's very hard. But yeah. in saying that, you play to the strengths. That's why we play a long ball football. If you drop Bruno into City's midfield, he'd, he'd, he'd be mean. Mm. Because he'd be asked to ro- control the ball, put his foot up, look around, play, link, get the ball back, move it again, do the mm. same thing. He'd look like rubbish. Yeah. Because <laughs> Bruno is not that type of player. Mm. Bruno is more like... That's how he plays. It's like, brother, chill out. <laughs> chill I, out. I fully <laughs> agree with you, but um, City were never like that. So now they have a striker who they need to change that way. And that's what I'm saying. And the mm. players also need to cater to Haaland. Like, they've done yeah. such a good job so far. But to say Haaland's not, well, we play better without Haaland, it's the easy way out. Yeah, like, definitely. Definitely. I think what is your, uh, where I'm probably coming from is the fact that you should start with Haaland if it's not working. Instead of Pep being stubborn and keeping him on till the 80th minute, go. Julian? Come about play. 300 million yeah. on the bench. Like, but, uh, Julian? 20 million? <laughs> get up and get in there. Like, that's how I look at it. Yeah, I agree with that. I actually, I may have come off a little bit like harsh on Haaland when saying that, but now that Tick has brought me back to reality, I do agree that it's because we're not used to playing with that target man. Again, a brilliant target man, the oh. best target man you can ever have. <laughs> right now, yeah. Right now. Yeah, that's about it. But we can't find him. And I just think, it, it does, does it come to a point where you say it's not just, it's no, not for us? But that's the coach's responsibility. Yeah. At the end of the day, like I'm pretty sure Pep had a say when they said we're going to go get Haaland. Either Pep was like, yeah, go for it. Or Pep was like, no, we cannot replace him. But why do you, <laughs> we why cannot you, replace him. But you know why do you think they got Alvarez? <clears throat> no, but they got Alvarez before they locked up Haaland. Yeah. That was, uh, that, I think that uh, um, the Alvarez deal was opportunity. I think, that I think like that's what it was. 20 mil, young talent. Like the yeah. money made sense. They probably scouted him. They knew in the summer there were a lot more clubs that would be interested in. And just went, let's pack it up, wrap it up quick. Mm. And that way, we don't, you don't want to be chasing two strikers in one window. Yeah, I forget is, that. is what I mean. So, and they probably foresaw like the Jesus. exits in your Sterlings, your Amoslev, Sterling, Ferran Torres. All those boys that left, they probably saw that happening. So they thought, like, mm. let's bring Alvarez in now and then we'll get Haaland. We'll work on a striker in the... Because in the, do you know how competitive and how hard it is to get a striker? Far out. It's ridiculous, bro. There's not many strikers you can go buy right now and you go, I'm happy with this guy. I can, I can bring him in my team and start him straight away. You see it in United. They had to settle for Leghorst, of all people. That was a money issue. That Yeah, I know. But, like, still just had to settle, like... Is that, speaking of Weghorst, yeah, you know what a game he had against Newcastle. <laughs> How many touches was it? You know, Seven? I love. You know, I love. Seven Seven I love Gary Neville. Half, I think wasn't it? I love Gary Neville. Why? When Weg- when United win a game, he praises Weghorst, praises him. Oh, the work rate and and then yesterday he just you you can't go into the game into the league trying to win things with a centre forward. You know, I'm on loan. Like, it's like, come on, bro, shut up. You're blaming everything on one player. Hmm. Uh, that's what I, I don't like about United fans. I really don't because they yell, yell, yell. But when something's not not all of them, obviously you you you're always genuine. But they yell, 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 and then when like they lose the result, they're like, yeah, but look, all this stuff here, like no, 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 it's either one way or the other. No, no. That's um, why when it comes to Trent, I bl- I blast him. I know, know look, good Trent with Boston, but with Virgos, I've always been consistent yeah. with my oh, narrative. Yeah. <laughs> you boys, how many times have you sat there and gone, T, give him a chance? T. I never say that, Ola. Yeah, not, not that, but I remember in the cup final, Fred was like to me, bro, why do you hate Virgos so much? I'm like, I don't hate him. I understand he's limited, and I don't understand, I don't see what he's doing. You don't blame the him. You I don't know blame he... him. I, I understand how we got him, but I'm just saying if there's other options there, I'm more leaning over to. To suss out that I'll keep it nice, short, quick, and uh, maybe a little bit G-rated today. Um, since Liverpool, we've, we've been playing like, yeah, like we've not played well. Um, I think Casemiro getting a red card has compounded that, and it's quite evident. Is he still suspended? Yeah, he's got another two games left. Does he? Yeah, bro, four games. No, isn't he back next game? No, lad. <laughs> oh, my He's God. halfway through his suspension. Who's got next? Sorry. Uh, Brentford on Wednesday or Thursday oh, my morning. Oh, home? Uh, yeah. And then we have, I think, Everton. You guys might lose both those games. Oh, bro. You guys might lose both those games. So, yeah, go on. And this is what I'm going on to. The most alarming thing about the game yesterday, I don't think it was just the game. I clocked this when we versed Fulham as well. Is our attitude stunk, man. It's actually stunk. I don't think as new as good as Newcastle were good. I think we allowed that for we allowed that to happen. And Ten Hag, since Casemiro has not been in the team, he's persisted with this sort of man marking thing that he does in the middle of the park, which is good when you've got players that can do it well. But unfortunately, like 
Sabitza, McTominay, and who was the third person? Bruno. They're not physical enough to play in a midfield three. McTominay, everyone knows what I think about that bloke. Like, <laughs> he's a waste of time, bro. Straight out. Like, and yesterday's loss, Ten Hag has to take some responsibility for it. I think he should like, take 80% of it. I think uh, that game was... We could have gotten a draw out of that game had Ten Hag not been stubborn. And I always say managers can be stubborn because at the end of the day... You make decisions because you're the one on the chopping block. Like, we look at our mate Potter. As much as Potter might complain about how things went his way, at the end of the day, he was in charge of picking lineups, tactical substitutions, blah, 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 blah. That was all on Potter, right? So, we turned out yesterday. I think the starting lineup was suspect. I I, I don't understand, bro. I've been saying this for two, three years. There are kids in our... For 100%, there are kids in our youth teams that are better than Scott McTominay. I, I'm not hearing it. I don't want to hear this whole, he's homegrown, he's good, he's a kid, he's coming through. Like, you messaged me the other day and you said the bloke scored four goals or two goals or whatever was it was. Like yeah, you, you scored four goals in international break. I'm like, I don't care because when he comes to the club and he does his job for the people that pay him, he doesn't do nothing. Bro, he doesn't do nothing. How can you be playing in the middle of the park for Manchester United and when you pull up that touch gem- demographic that, that, that they showed... The heat map? Not the heat map oh, the touch, and yeah. the number of touches. You're in the top five least touches of players on the field. You're playing in the middle of the park. Football literally is won and lost in the middle of the park. you got a good engine, you win games. McTominay is in there with Virgos. And that's the problem, the spine going through. We're doing this thing where we're trying to build up through the flanks because we don't trust the person who's playing in the middle of the park. Like, brother, I, I miss Casemiro, but this person I miss more than Casemiro has to be Ericsson. Because when Ericsson was in, he wasn't was he wasn't world class like doing things that you go, oh my god. But all he was doing is he knew when to speed things up, he knew when to slow things down, he knew when to move the ball, and he knew how to bring other players into in, into play. Like I cannot wait for that bloke to be back. He's back training now, and I can't wait for him to be back. And if you watch the whole game yesterday, Anthony Martial in literally twenty minutes showed what having a striker that can move. Get, drop back, take a touch, turn, pass it. It just made us look almost like five, six times better because you don't have a static person. Like, you look at Newcastle, man, every single defender in the league is so comfortable against Vergost. Uh, I, do, I don't know <laughs> which defender goes, ah, I'm in for a tough shift today. Yeah, like, it's, and it's not his fault, man. Like, at the end of the day, he should be coming on for 20 minutes, but it's just rubbish, bro. Attitude's rubbish. They look at 2 0, those boys look like they wanted to check out and sign out again. And the way we played yesterday was no different to the way we played against Liverpool. The only difference is Willock can't pick a corner. Like, if Willock could pick a corner and find the... Uh, that should have been 4-0 if... Like, if, bro, if we should have been 2-3-0 down at half time. Like, it's it's disgusting, bro. We need we need to start winning games. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, Eric Ten Hag has been getting all the praise lately, yep. which rightly so. Because yep. he's turned that club from a dumpster to they're starting to believe and starting to get onto things. But... Those subs and the, that stubbornness, and I love I love managers. I love what yep. they do. I love their decision making. So when um, managers do well, they get all the praise. But when they they should th- receive the criticism, bro. Those subs, I don't understand Lindelof. Okay, the subs <coughs> do not make sense to me. And the first sub I'm going to criticize is I'm sick and tired of people going off at Anthony. And I said this a couple of weeks ago off camera to the boys. I said I'm sick and tired of United fans going off at Anthony. Because there's, a, there's another expensive winger that we have in that squad who we're just carrying. And you couldn't say nothing about it because it was off on leave for being sick. Right. Now, I'm getting to the point where I go, if you are sick and you cannot do your job, don't come to work. Don't have the facilities. Because th- that's, that's as simple as that. Like, Sancho has been cotton-wrapped and baby wood, And you know what? We don't say nothing bad about Jaden Sancho because it's Jaden Sancho. But he's no better. Like, for me, how can you rip into Anthony and say, Anthony's a one-trick pony. Anthony doesn't do this. Anthony Anthony doesn't have a right foot. Anthony's Anthony. Anthony, brother, look at Sancho. Sancho's had more time to bet into that team. Sancho has no excuse to be tired or or say he's fatigued. The guy guy had three months off to go be with himself, recover, get his headspace in the right place, and decide that he wants to come play football. He's been eased back into the team. You didn't go on international duty. Like, you should be hungry to come into the team and prove a point to say, I haven't played for a couple of weeks. 
I want to come make a change. So that's my first guy on Fraud Watch. Sancho's on Fraud Watch. And none, none of these take it easy on Sancho business anymore because he's doing my head in. No, that's enough. Bro. Like, that's... Uh, like, how much more time does a kid need? Like, th- things like tracking back and defending, that's you either got it or you don't. You either want to do it or you don't. That's not something you get coached and that has nothing to do with the ability. Like Mems was saying, I would rather have my player get make a mistake trying to to, to, to defend and try to change the game than not even try at all. So Sanchez the first one on forward watch. The, the, the subs didn't make sense to me as well because I'm like, all right, if you're going to take McTominay off, why are you taking Varane and you're Martinez off? off as well? like you told me. Yeah, I was like, why are you taking your heart off? And then what, what the first next, next attacking play or two minutes later, boom, they scored. I'm like, what? What'd you expect? Yeah, Martinez <laughs> was not happy about being subbed off, but through his bottle was so angry. Yeah, yeah. rightly so. Like, and rightly so. But Martinez, like... <clears throat> I'm he not cares, even, at least. He cares. But, like, with the height thing, like, I just... Those subs, none of them made sense. And, look, here's the thing about Ten Hag. I've watched him all the way through this season. And the one thing is, when Ten Hag does things, I can say seven to eight out of ten times, he gets it right. And there's been so many times he's done things which I've, I wouldn't have done, right? And I guess this is why he's on the big bucks and this is why he's the manager. <laughs> because you'll do things which I'm just like, mm, that's a bit. But then like five minutes later, ten minutes later, you see what he was thinking or what he was it trying works. to do. And what, it was just, I don't want to be reactionary and say, oh, ten arc, this, ten arc, that. No, no, it's I'm not, not saying Yeah, that, it's not being reactionary. It's just in a game like yesterday, I think he could have influenced the game. I think his stubbornness in, in sticking with McTominay. We've seen McTominay since um, pretty much the World Cup, since we came back from the World Cup. He's not played well he's not played well we're carrying a passenger like it's bad enough we're already carrying Vergost you can't then put McTominay in and then carry him as well and then when you make your subs you then have to carry Sancho as well <laughs> and then when you make your subs literally like, everyone's just carrying like, it's like a child kiss well, well, how many people are supposed to carry one more like in football you can get away with carrying one player in a team maybe two at max but once it's more than two people you can't carry someone through a team it's like when you see if a whole team drops sevens you can afford for one person to drop a five, as long as it's not like a keeper. Yeah. Like you can afford an outfit player. So yeah, that's it. I bro. feel like they got. I feel like United are getting comfortable now, and this is, might be a wake up call. But I thought that Liverpool game would have been a wake up call for them. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Um, it's all been the same. Do bro. you think Man United will still make the top? Yeah, four? yeah, yeah. We've yeah, got def- game. Look, we've got games in hand, and our running's quite favourable as well. I'm not worried about top I four status. They've locked it. Yeah, I think I'm not worried about top four status. I'm just. Worry about the attitude more than the performance. It's like if we lost these games and we're out running and trying, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, okay. And I've heard the whole thing. Oh, you've, we, and I said we've played the most games. Yeah, you can factor fatigue, but fatigue. Trust me, things like fatigue and all of that, it all goes with hunger as well, man. Like how how much do you want it? Exactly. So yeah, that's your order to wrap. And Graham Potter is finally the twelfth manager. So of jealous. <laughs> oh, bro, me Brother, too. If you can get yourself a pay packet like that for working six months, what did he walk away 60 with? 60 million. And then tw- and they had to pay Brighton 20, 20 mil. 20, tw- okay, and then Brighton had to pay him some of that 20 mil. So um, he, w- he, bro, listen. So he walked away with. Let's forgive Brighton. <laughs> let, let's, Brighton, you keep your money, you know? Make a, you're going to make Brighton, it's whatever. Yeah, like pay, pay Kai Sato with a hat on me. I was on 50 bucks. <laughs> 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 but look. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably that's one of your best right. ones. <laughs> so Potter's like, all right, I walk away with sixty M's. Yeah, because I don't know. Like I've I said this from the start, bro. I we also we also all said the same thing. I said that he should not have even left Brighton. What? Can you listen yeah. to this? Yeah, definitely. But yeah. listen to me now. Yeah, listen to this. Graham Potter on the sideline at the Bernabeu. What do you think Carla Ancelotti is saying? He, what do you think he's thinking? He's probably like, I'm cooking this bloke today. <laughs> and I'm not even going to lift my eyebrow, bro. This guy's going to get cooked. Like, do you see Graham Potter on the sideline and think, ah, that's a tough When I say yeah. Pep on the sideline, I'm like, ah. when I say him too short on the sideline, I was like, ooh. You know what I mean? It's when not, I say. It's, it's the presence of a manager that and, and, also adds. And to just it. the decisions that he's making. Like, mm. the game against, that Chelsea lost against Villa, Villa were a better team. Chelsea, played, Chelsea didn't play that bad, but the subs, like Gallagher coming on, like, there's just things that. Come on, bro. You I, can't be doing I that. I honestly feel like he's a pushover manager. Like, he lets the players pick what they yeah, want Yeah, like, to do. this is what he does. Like, he'll tell Felix, like, yeah. play left. And then Felix will be like, no. And he'll be like, all right, I won't. But to do that, it comes down to one of two things. Like you said, it could be a pushover manager. I think status and respect. This is one of the reasons why I think Zidane could coach any team in the world and not have a problem is because when he walks in there, people go, oh, Zizou. Oh, I grew up watching Zizou. 
what's he got to say? And they know how. And then they're just there like this, like, like googly eyed. Yeah. yeah, like these are like he's got that presence, like Mourinho. You see what he's done in world football. Pep, you see what how he's elevated players. And Salotti, you see what he's done in um all the Video leagues he's been. Klopp, you see like, Klopp, yeah. these managers, like they've earned that right. When you have someone like Thiago Silva in that team who's got more top level football experience <laughs> than his manager, it's a bit of a problem. Yeah. I'm not saying that Thiago Silva is going to undermine his manager or is going to um, lead like a revolution against Potter. But I'm saying when you have players of that caliber who they're sitting in there and going, and this is, again, maybe a reason why Ronnie fell out with Ten Hag. It's that whole perception of, I know more than you. I've been in the game and I've played at top level more than, more than you've coached at top level. So you can't tell me what to do. Mm. Um, I'm not saying Thiago Silva would do that. But with someone like Potter, I think that was one of the, Hardest things in that dressing room. And he had a hard job in like Not trying to piece all those players together. But that's a little bit easier if those players damn well are scared of you and respect the hell out of you. And what makes it worse is what Tuchel said in the media too about how he's actually really upset that he got sacked from Chelsea. What was it, like 30 seconds? Yeah, three the minutes. Blood got sacked three minutes. Bust a nut, bro. Yeah, three minutes. Quick, boom, that's, in and out. I can bust four nuts in three minutes. <laughs> 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 Timestamp, that's going out. <laughs> that's nah, keep it in, bro. That's all right. We shout out true colours here now. But... Yeah, don't. like he just, I, I saw it coming from the day he signed as manager. I'm like, man, he's not going to make the season. I think I even said it on one of the episodes. I, did, I, I, I thought he'd yeah. make the season, bro. Yeah. No, I, I actually thought, I thought, thought didn't, bro. Well, yeah, I, I, I had no I just don't him. understand why now. Mm. Like, I would have sacked him right after the Dortmund game. Yeah, the, the first, first game one? they lost. Yeah. I would have yeah. sa- I would have been like, bro. Doesn't matter, you won the second like, game. I know you're here. They got the, boy, like, the boys employed you and that, but bro, you got to go. <laughs> you're not, you're not like, come on, bro. The guy comes out and says, you know, we're trying to win. Like, I don't know. I think he's... I guess he's, we're just going to go win the Champions League. <laughs> look, he's, he, he's, so yeah. per- he's so perfect for a team like Brighton, for a team like Brentford. I'd even argue and say he can coach a team like Arsenal. But you know, if they got the Zerbi over Potter... Yeah, better result. Better result. But again, like with Potter, if I'd see him coaching Arsenal. A young group of players, English, you and know, good Spurs. play style. Spurs... I see him coaching a lot of teams, but not Chelsea, not Man City, not Liverpool. Not, not any even, of those Not teams. even Arsenal for me. Yeah, look, Arsenal, I'd argue the fact of the... The, the fans I, are, they I think, come I for think, you, bro. Yeah, yeah, I think now Arsenal's out of his grasp. I think Arsenal, yeah. if this was Potter's like current form at Brighton like last year, but this was like three years ago. I don't know what the timeline doesn't yeah, match yeah, up, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like three years ago, I think Arsenal fans would have been a lot more open to that idea. But hmm. like now, I think... And this is, the, this is the worst thing about being a manager and getting sacked in the manner that Potter, Potter has. Like, if you're Jose Mourinho and this happens to you, you're going to get a job at like that echelon, right? But, but, but it's not so bad, right? Because he gets that fat payout. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> you know? but I still think he's got that ambition. Oh, like he wants, to, he wants he'll, to he'll stay. Still, like he's yeah. not going to go retire. I don't see him saying, going, you know what, bro? This Honey? Month, I would. <laughs> I would, bro. I'd dock yeah. my boat in Turkey and just stay there for the rest yeah. of my life. Like, this might be a good thing for him, but... Honestly, he might, I hope he comes back from. I hope he finds. He'll be in the thing. prem. He'll find a job. But no, I'm saying, definitely. I oh, think, brother, with the sackings going on now, he'll but find I think a job. he's been knocked out of that top level job contention, and this is where the issue is. The same way Lampard's been knocked out of that. Like no top level club that's in the top six will look at Lampard and go, "I'm going to give you a job." Yeah. Right? No, no club would do that. Gerard's lost that ability to. Go to those rushing clubs. in, bro. They're rushing into yeah, what they. Yeah, yeah. Lampard and Gerard both rushed. I, in, s- I yeah. swear, Prada. If he stand up Brighton, I said it. They could have got Champions League, and they're mm. full in contention for it. Mm. Like they're full. They could have been that guy, that first bloke for Brighton. I don't know if Brighton have ever played Champions League. Maybe I, I don't think they have. That I can recall. Yeah, but, um, but imagine being that guy because now the Zerbi, rightly so, is probably going to be there. And if Pot- even if it's Europa League, bro. if Potter stayed out that season and and stuck it out, he honestly could have been flying in for a job next Ooh. season with Tottenham, with whoever. He, that Tottenham job would have been his wrap. If he stayed at Brighton. I, don't, I just don't, I don't know. I never see But don't be surprised. I can still see, I don't know what Tottenham are going to do in their managerial situation as well. So, hmm. that's yeah, a, that's Nikers, conversation men, Potter, them, whatever. Yeah. You know, he might be in the talks. And it's time for... This award for the biggest fraud. And the results? Where is the results? And my boy Jack Grealish with our new intro. I have... Oh it is a, I, 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 we didn't even talk about him, bro. listen... Yeah, but listen to me. See how yeah. I say the future? Yeah. I sent you that clip three, four weeks ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> we didn't even talk about my man. Like, it's all right. He had a good game. But had a good game. My yeah. fraud of the week. I'm going to start off real quick. Jürgen yeah. Klopp. Um, defensively, we're rubbish, right? And if you say that, you have to react. And he hasn't reacted in a, for a long time, bro. 
You remember when he changed the formation? Mm. I was like, oh, Klopp has some. You can't be too stubborn, bro. Like, you got to get results now, you know? Mm. Play, even if you play all three centre backs, I don't, I don't know, but just do something. Change something. And I think now he's realizing that loyalty, he can't be loyal to anymore to these players because they're just not backing him. So, it's my fraud of the week. I still love you, brother. And I still back you all the way. I know you're fraud of the week. Yeah, yeah. Jaden. Jaden Sanch. Well, well, welcome to TK's Fraud Watch. Welcome to Fraud Watch. It's I it. feel like he's going to be here for a loyal. A nah, while. Jaden's going to be here for a while, bro. I'm actually starting to slowly jump into the ship that he might not have the cheese to cut it on our team. So It's a very hard for TK to say that about someone, too. I don't hear him say that often. Like it's yeah. then that's mentally not his ability. I just think he's 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 a shell of himself. Mm. It's English players, bro. They get oh my god, it just burns my life. Seventy two M's, bro, down the drain. That's what it's starting to look like. Dortmund and City are laughing because yeah. you know we got to cut out, cut nah, out of that. No, but you know what? what? Well, you know what? City yeah. probably always knew it, bro. Yeah, that's why City bro, we don't, we don't let players go for nothing. Yeah, but City probably always said like, bro, this guy's talented, but his just mindset's are rubbish. Like mm. he weak as meant. His mental is like very weak. Oh. Just a quick trivia. I want you to name one player that we've let go in the last couple of years that's gone on to be exceptional. Lavia. Uh, we technically didn't let him go. We've still, still got yeah. a buyback. I don't really know. City haven't. Ferran Torres went to Barca, but... Yeah. I don't Barca's think Barca. Not everyone... Yeah. There's not one star in Barcelona, we, so it's very hard to say. We've never let anyone go that's, <laughs> you know, half decent. Says a lot. I want, yeah. you to, I, want to name you, I want you to name me one player that's left Liverpool that's done well. Sadio Mane? No, he hasn't. <laughs> no, he has. he's, been in, he's been injured. <laughs> Otamendi won a World Cup after he left. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, I like that one, big boy. Nah, but he's, I, yeah. think, I still think he's a panel bed. I'm not even he's the <laughs> shit, <laughs> hey, he's shit as defender. Um, <laughs> Brain my, snaps. My fraud of the week is a bit myself, actually. Ooh. It's me, because for not going to, to, to Formula 1, to the Melbourne Grand Prix, because, mm. man, what a race that was. Yeah. Shout out to Aaron as well, bro. Shout, yeah, shout out Aaron. Our boy man. Aaron, our local talent, homegrown talent. Our graphic right? designer. Our Scott graphic Tom designer. No, no, our <laughs> Our Trent Alec. Not even Trent, bro. Kind of yeah. <laughs> our who is Aaron. Aaron. Aaron, you're Aaron, brother. Um, I'm happy to see you having a good time there. Yeah, bro, it looked like a blast. Yeah, what a race. If I, ever went to F- if I ever went to Melbourne, bro, it'll be a fashion week every day. I have he a cameraman there, yeah, outfits every day, dripping out. <laughs> so next year we're doing he's, that. He's trying to outdress Lewis Hamilton. No, that won't happen. He's big drip. That won't happen. He's got money drip. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Next year, I definitely um, want to take the couch on a tour to, to the Formula it, One. Bro. I think that would be Let's amazing. Do it. Always wanted to do it, man. We'll do it, amazing. bro. It's, it's in the. Guys, thanks. Thank you so much for tuning in. That's been episode 38 of Ajiba's Couch. That's been my good friend TK. That's been my good friend Sui. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Next week, we've got an amazing three episodes for you. We've got the UFC, AJB UFC show episode two. Ajiba's Catch episode 39 and League Lads episode 7 next week. Yeah. We are busy. Do you okay? know how hungry we are, bro? It's Ramadan. Do you know how hungry we are, bro? <laughs> <laughs> and- oh.